All right, boom. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to react to why you should watch Jojo Bizarre Adventures Part 1. I was going to watch this, like, at the very, very beginning, but I thought, this is probably going to have spoilers in it. So I thought, let's, now that we kind of know what Part 1's about and, you know, the whole Dio and Jonathan and all of them things there, I thought, you know, let's go back. Let's have a look. Let's see, like, for people that haven't watched Jojo or, you know, might be new to the channel and be like, oh, why should I watch Part 1? Let's just react to why we should watch part one or why should we get into jojo so anyway oh who's this done by i forgot this is done by super eye patch wolf link will be in the description down below it's done 2016 god damn 2016 anyway let's react to it let's go hey Hey. I remember back in the early 2000s, I was browsing the manga in my local comic book place and I came across an unusual looking manga called Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh, so I, I glanced at the blurb okay. on the back and I remember it saying something like, Follow Jojo and his ancestors as they travel to Egypt to fight evil vampire Dio and his supernatural forces. Jojo's kind of a dumb name, I thought, as I back on the shelf, which is extremely unfortunate because what I was passing up on that day was one of you... the most seminal, influential, yeah. and well-regarded manga series of all time. To Literally. give that overblown statement a little Literally. context, Hirohiko Ariaki's Jojo's Bizarre Adventure has been in near constant publication for the last 30 years. It has sold yeah. over 95 million volumes and in 2006 Swear it was down. So the most popular manga of all time Swear and it was sold by Japan's Agency for Cultural Affairs, beating out even the likes of One Piece and Dragon Ball. More importantly, what? if you've enjoyed any shonen themed manga or anime from the what? last two decades, then chances are that it has some roots in JoJo's. I'm not being facetious here. When a series has its DNA in as many different properties as Is that Pokemon, actually true? Dragon Ball, Naruto, Hunter x Hunter, Street Fighter, the Persona series, Kill a What? Kill, Guilty Gear, and Final Fantasy, to name but a few, you'd best sit up and take notice. Wait, what? Here, I didn't even, know despite that. Despite how influential JoJo's is, there's still nothing quite like it. And while being one of Shonen That's Jump's true. longest running series, the earlier parts still hold up incredibly well. And the most recent, still going strong in Ultra Jump, are regarded with the same fan and critical regard as the previous ones. And many would even argue that the series has only grown in strength over time, with 2005's Steel Ball Run being considered by many Ariaki's magnum opus. What's Steel Ball Run? What's that? But how can one series sustain such a huge fan base over such a long period of time? Why is it that True. so many creators reference JoJo's in their work? And is it really that bizarre? Well, friends, that is one thing. It's again very, what very, we're very about. bizarre. Let's so be let's honest. focus our breathing, activate our stands, and talk about why you should watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Part one. Oh, all right, this gets me, that gets me excited uh, every one. single. Oh, so yeah, okay, we get thank specific, you. Here's a little overview of how JoJo's works as a concept. Okay. Currently, Jojo has been running since 1987, and in that time Fuck has been me. broken into eight major parts. Each part features yeah. a brand Four, new protagonist five, and six, a completely different seven, setting. Eight. Well, there's nine the in it, that occur in each part the new are one mostly self-contained, but will occasionally share one or two cast members. The binding thread here is the Joe Star bloodline, to I which hold each tight. respective protagonist is a part of, starting out with Jonathan Joestar in 1880 and coming right up to the modern day, with yep. one or two universe-shattering plot incidents thrown in for good measure. And okay. all eight have a star-shaped birthmark on their left trapezius. All I'm eight seem predestined to assemble a motley crew and do battle with some dark and nefarious force. The cool thing here is that out of all eight protagonists, they all stand out as unique and distinct Yeah, characters. it's so and while true. while I certainly have my favourites among the bunch, I genuinely enjoy each and every one of them for yeah, their own distinct same. reasons. Well, the ones some, that I like know, part anyway. 2's Joseph Joestar are oh, hey, very charismatic. While others, yeah. like Part 5's Giorno Giovanni, are placid and calculating. The difference between them highlight Ariaki's extreme willingness to take risks. And I can't think of yeah, a Yeah, when you deep it, he takes a lot of risks, because none of them are exactly the same at all. So many iconic, likeable, and hilarious heroes. And I think Ariaki's willingness to move on from a character once their story's been told accounts yeah. both for Jojo's inexhaustible yeah, staying power, I agree. as well as Ariaki's vastly improved That is so impressive, yeah, 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 100%. Watching him develop as 100%. both a writer and an artist is one of the joys back. of experiencing Jojo's, but more on that later. 
Now with all that in mind, we need to start somewhere, and no better place than the original Jojo, part Jonathan okay. Joestar, Jonathan, in part one okay. of the entire series, the arc known as Phantom Blood. The realest gentleman. The 2012 gentleman. anime adaptation of Phantom Blood was my first real exposure to Jojo's, and from my the moment the like Dio turned and glared at the camera, ago. I could feel that this was something <laughs> I was probably going to enjoy. Set in 1880 Victorian England, it tells the story of two adoptive brothers. Righteous, upstanding young gentleman Jonathan Joestar yeah, and sociopath gentleman. and all-around bad dude Dio Brando. Literally. The natural showdown that takes place between these two adoptive brothers is at the heart of Phantom Blood. And so what say we dive right in? No, yeah, let's go. It's at this point in a way you should watch that I'd start to break apart why the protagonist works. But for reasons that I'll get into later, I'd like to go and instead examine our yeah. main antagonist, Dio Brando. Oh, Dio. Oh, me, he is, he is a G, let's be honest. Blood is the duality of its two central characters. Yeah. This is a story about two people, and in a lot of ways, I think it's nearly more about Dio than it is about Jonathan. We're only a it's, few minutes into yeah, episode you deep one it. it's actually true. that Dio is about as big a shit heel yeah. as they come. But what oh, separates God. Dio from other irredeemable villains, and trust me guys, Dio is fucking irredeemable, is yep. that the show goes to great lengths to establish why Dio acts the way he does, long before he ever reaches the status of a true villain. Each the thing is, I never really understood why tell us something new he wanted to fuck up Jojo. Do you know what I mean? Like, I never really understood that. often in a way that's subtler than you might expect. Take a look at this scene from episode 1. A young Dio defeats his opponent in chess, only to then have his head violently slammed into the table. Yeah, I get that one. This scene, while taking barely any screen time, lets us know four important things about Dio. What's that? One, the setting itself. This scene takes place in a grimy pub. The fact okay. that Dio is frequenting a place like this means it's probably fair to assume that both He's him poor. and his family are not members of society's elite. Yeah. Two, yeah, 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 yeah. Despite his young age, he's intelligent he's enough to beat a more yeah. experienced older player with what seems like some degree of ease. That's true, Three, that is getting true. getting his head slammed shows that this is obviously not a situation he chooses to be in willingly. Of Life's course. not easy for young Dio, and despite his intelligence, he does not have the power the money. to change his social yeah, position. Yeah, 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 his yeah, lack yeah. of fear or surprise shows us perhaps that this isn't the first time something like this has happened to him. Number four, and this one is probably the subtlest, but also the most important. As the man mocks Dio, Dio reaches for the fork sitting next to him, most likely with the intent oh, of Oh, I didn't even clock attacker. that. But then after a I just thought he grabbed the money. He chooses not to. What oh I love here is it's shit! Not I didn't even stopping Dio from taking action. We can tell that from his facial expression. Rather, he's frustrated. The choice not to pick up the fork seems to be a tactical one. Like in a brief moment, he's run the numbers and knows that he can't come out on a physical altercation with this attack. Yeah, Dio's fair enough. ability to look at a situation and calculate his place within it later becomes an important part of why he's so dangerous. And seeing it seeded so early on in the story gives his later actions all the more gravity. Jonathan, on the other hand, is everything Dio isn't. He's an yeah. exuberant young man with old-fashioned ideas about chivalry and helping yeah. those in need. Only problem is that he does not have the physicality to back it no, up. No, he While really he's doesn't. Not an he really doesn't. Character, his innocence and enthusiasm are endearing. He doesn't seem like the sharpest tool in the shed, but he's a nice guy no. who wants nothing he is more a, than he's, to get into he's, boyish he's, adventures yeah. with his dog and best friend. Oh, I didn't even look like you see his dog's penis. So, just to note here, this Danny. has all been established about seven minutes into the first episode. I Already never, I never really analyzed it like that, you know. Both of whom have grander things they wish to aspire to. These characters are now perfectly positioned to crash into each oh, other. Oh yeah, which well, holy them hell up. is exactly what happens when Dio is adopted by the Joestar family. Literally. And from the moment Dio steps off the carriage, shit kicks off. Dio sees Literally. Jonathan as everything he isn't and never had the chance to be. To Dio, Jonathan is a spoiled weakling who deserves nothing of his family's fortune or any respect. Dio begins to inflict yeah. the exact kind of cruelty and punishment we've seen him Man just dodging and weaving, ducking and dodging. Oh, he, he systematically goes through each separate part of Jonathan's life and inflicts as much damage as possible. He really does, isn't it? Like he coming between him really and his father does, and father, even attempting yeah. to steal his romantic interest in yeah. Erina. Before long, and that's why I don't have Jonathan's dad. That's why I don't have Jonathan's dad. That's why I just, that's why I just don't rate his dad. evil than we ever originally gave him credit for. But in turn, we also start to see a different side of Jonathan. In the beginning, Jonathan can't even comprehend why Dio is doing this. Yeah, thing. literally, yeah. All he yeah. wanted was for the two of them to be friends. Friends, yeah. it's not yeah. long before it seems like Jonathan he is just goes, hopelessly outmatched against Dio. But despite yeah. everything Dio puts Jonathan through, he Jonathan still fights endures back. it all, 
and ends up becoming stronger because he of it. He does. And when he does actually stand up to Dio at the end of episode one, we feel elated. There's a real schoolyard feeling of the weekend yeah, finding. Yeah, yeah, we were ads. so... I remember me and my dad watching it. Jonathan. It was so this lit. This ends episode one as we time skip seven years forward. And hey, oh, Jonathan yeah. and we are best friends now. Except no. totally not. So, yeah, they're not. <laughs> this is all before JoJo's ever really lives up to its namesake. Before things ever really get truly bizarre. Yeah, yeah, But it's I feel true. it's important to point out just how strong a setup Phantom Blood is. By the end of the first episode, we already have strong and complicated feelings about our two central characters. True. Dio's an asshole, obviously. Yeah. But at the same time, we know you what him. made him that way. And that yeah. understanding brings a level of well, complexity anyway. to his character often missing from villains. Meanwhile, we've watched Jonathan become stronger through his adversity with Dio. And because of this, we're already rooting for him. This yeah, is all before true. any of the supernatural lunacy kicks in. Long before Dio becomes an unkillable psychotic vampire cult leader, On, and the Italian it, man in a top hat teaches Jonathan magical sunshine karate. Um, but that's kind of awesome too. We already know how we feel about these characters, yeah. and that setup isn't complicated by trying to understand the rules of the supernatural situation they're both going to become a part of. When Dio becomes a vampire in episode 3, it's terrifying. Oh, so only episode 3 becomes a vampire? Fuck, he is no. as an ordinary Literally. Human. On the flip Literally. side, it's fun watching Jonathan master his Hamon battle style, as he's yeah. already overcome so much with conviction alone. Jonathan and Dio work as a rivalry because they're essentially two characters who constantly change the path the other one is on. Dio's initial attempts to ruin Jonathan's life in pursuit of his own goals creates Ooh, a stronger I remember that. Who and he's putting in his eyes back Dio's to, to yeah. new levels, which ends up leading Dio down a much darker path darker than, path than he would have yeah. in the first place. Yeah. It's this kind of cause and effect dynamic that makes a fictional relationship believable, and watching their relationship shift and change over the course of Phantom Blood is one of the best things about it. Phantom Blood was great, I'm not gonna lie. If vampire psychopaths and magical sunshine magicians caught you off guard, then... Who boy, you have a lot coming your way, my friends. Let's oh, God, you no this is called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And Ariaki was not fucking around when he picked that name. JoJo's Literally. is seriously, seriously weird. Even yes. long before <laughs> everyone starts fighting with psychic punching ghosts. However, yeah, this also Literally. highlights a major strength of the series, and Ariaki himself. It's outlandish and wild on a level a few other animes can even touch. Characters all express themselves with hyper-dramatic cries of dialogue, and they strike insane fashion model style poses. poses yeah, and some literally. of the logic behind the action scenes are so insane that you can't help but laugh, while the characters themselves take the situation deathly seriously. Yeah, this is yeah, crazy, listen. crazy, crazy stuff. And to further well, it's amazing, that's why we love it. a few completely out of context moments. Jack the Ripper leaps out of an exploding horse. Yeah, literally. A disembodied head and a full-grown man have a wrestling match. And oh, previously yeah. mentioned Sunshine Magician punches a tiny frog in order to prove a but point. Doesn't even, but it doesn't even hurt the frog. But it's all the boat acknowledges so, uh, its own insanity while never really compromising the believability of its character. Get a snake, man. This stuff is so ludicrous that it constantly borders on parody. But what I think keeps it grounded is that even while Ooh. the characters face these insane encounters... The motives and dynamic of Jonathan Stay and Dio same. is the driving force behind it all. And this gives yeah. us something of substance to cling to throughout the near constant lunacy. This technique of having a relatively simple and grounded core plot accented by insane subplots is something Ariaki would later become a master of, but even as it is here, it's pulled off pretty effectively. I, I think agree. credit is due here to David Production. Phantom Blood doesn't seem like a show with an excessive budget or time frame, but stylistically it completely works, and its yeah. outlandish visuals and boarding match the tone of the story perfectly. They yeah, use I an agree. interesting I technique do agree. where they'll completely switch up the colour palette of a scene, just to add a jolt of surrealism to it, and yeah. it gives the whole show an offbeat and energetic feel. Dramatic and I love that, are used I really well, do love that. And do a lot to up the already over-the-top emotions of the characters even when the animation tends to be quite sparse. While not being the most amazing show you'll ever see, I have to give it up for David Productions on this one. They worked really no, effectively from a source they material that I, uh, imagine was probably not so <laughs> I swear down. The voice acting That's for the most jerks. part is pretty great, with special mention to Takahito Koyasu's rendition of Dio. Handling the role with all the seething bravado that one of anime's most iconic... Yeah, Dio's deserves. voice actor is... And you know what? Dub's totally fine too. Yes, I found it. I haven't heard of that actually. First, but the voice actors sound like they're having a lot Maybe of Maybe we watch an episode in dub. I kind of want to hear what and the dub says. And after listening for a couple of episodes, so was I. Now, with all that in mind, as much as I enjoy Phantom Blood, you'd be delusional to think it's a perfect show. 
Essentially, you what can would you break say Phantom wrong with Blood it? down into three major arcs, all of which revolve around the conflict between Jonathan and Dio. But okay. for me, the real strength in Phantom Blood lies in arc one, which covers episodes one to three, and the final arc, which is just a single episode. Is an arc two of him just sort of and training and harming, right? The most episodes. And don't get me wrong, there's still some good stuff here, but it's really where you can see Ariaki struggling to find his voice with JoJo's. In I fact, see. it kind of feels a little like Fist of the North Star written by a crazy person. We spend way too long watching a battle with these relatively uninteresting that I, zombie Yeah, lights, I did agree with that. characters yeah. are introduced and disposed of before we ever really literally, get a to know them. Literally, Jonathan just yeah. battles his way through some minor villains before encountering Dio once again. And honestly, it just feels a little standard. And if there's one thing you could never accuse the rest of JoJo's of, it's as being that. standard. The logic of the fight is a little underdeveloped. Jonathan wins a lot of his battles through simply being A, super tough, or B, super righteous, which is generally how fights went during the period in manga when Phantom Blood was published. Fair enough. This is actually something we're going to come back to in a later video, because it's something okay. Ariaki would heavily rectify in JoJo's Part 2, and that knock-on effect oh, would yeah, reverberate does... through the entire oh, yeah. anime and manga industry. Yeah. But at this point, Ooh, Ariaki is definitely two. still figuring it out. While there are some fun characters here, I think it's also fair to say that Jonathan and Dio are the only ones who really stand by themselves. The rest of the cast are really just supports to them in various ways. Which yeah, they is are the okay. supporting cast though, which just is makes what they're the meant to do. Phantom Blood feel a little small. If it sounds like I, I have more you problems mean. with Phantom Blood than I would usually in a Why You Should Watch, then that's actually because I do. Phantom Blood has issues, like no doubt. But it's when you start to look at it as a small part of a larger whole does it become something truly special. A lot yeah, of this for I get me comes mean. from viewing it as an artifact of sorts, as not only something very much of its time, but also a brilliant snapshot of it the first major creative is that success how it used to look? That of is one jokes. of manga's most talented and prolific creators. Is that how the manga if looks? there's that is one so thing jokes. that's critical for me if I'm going to become a long-term fan of an artist, it's that I need to see their desire to change and grow, no matter how oh, high their base is. he does that, is. though. Take the like art of Blackie Junk Gallery, for example. Never I seen became that. a fan of theirs a couple of years ago, and despite absolutely okay. loving their initial work, each year I'm surprised and impressed with the new directions they take it, and how willingly they are to discard old staples and styles for the sake of trying something new. It's one okay. thing to find an artist you like, but something else entirely when you come to respect them for their drive to improve. This, in a nutshell, is why I have so much respect for Ariaki. Over the years, he's reworked and defined practically every part of himself as a manga creator, and watching him improve so dramatically as an artist and as a writer is just oh, yeah, about one of the most part five, isn't it? I've yeah. ever had as a consumer of media. It's in this light that Phantom Blood becomes important, because it's the start of Ariaki's journey. And in it, you can see all the disparate elements that Ariaki is struggling to galvanize. He wants to draw the adonic, hulking, Schwarzenegger-type ubermen of 80s pop culture, but he also wants to adorn them with lavish, high-fashion-inspired outfits and have them strike yeah. flamboyant and often yeah. feminine poses. He wants each combat encounter to be it's a true. touching and emotional battle, while at the same time being something completely off the wall oh. and ludicrous. Yeah. He wants to fill the world with unique and colourful characters, but it's only really Jonathan and Dio that stand on their own. Even looking back at his previously publicised works, Bao and Cool Shock BT, there's I've never a surprising heard of those. lack of consistency between works, which is a good indication that when Ariaki wrote Phantom Blood, he was still very much finding his voice as an artist. Yeah, Even fair enough. Jonathan himself. He's a surprisingly passive and reactionary character, nearly unsure of himself, which I think mirrors Ariaki's. But well, we do love Jonathan, though. Time. We really Ariaki do. We really do love Jonathan. In the interview of Volume One of Jojonia, I need to watch one of Ar Ariaki's interviews. He, writes, he was maybe a little on the boring side. Jonathan's passive, reacting to Dio's various attacks, and this leads him to discover his own way of life. Yeah. Perhaps this linked him to me as an author. Just as Jonathan was unsure how to live his life, I was unsure what way to take the character. Oh, Maybe is he I actually blew said as that? An author a little with Jonathan as he trudged up through life's hardships. Now, don't misunderstand. I do love here. that though. None I do love that response. To say that Phantom Blood isn't worth watching. No, I get what fact. you mean. On its own merits, Phantom Blood is a fun as hell show with some real heart. But it's as yeah. part one of JoJo's bizarre adventure that it becomes something truly important to experience. 
All the conflicting elements I've mentioned here are problems that Ariaki would eventually not only solve but completely master. These are the elements that would come to define his later work and infuse JoJo's with an energy and longevity that's maybe come only seen on. once or twice a generation. Mm. Now, before we finish up here, there's one more point I'd like to cover in Phantom Blood, and to do and so, that, I'm going Chung, to have to sir? go into detail about major plot events up to and beyond the final episode. So if you've got okay. everything you need to know about Phantom Blood, then now would be a good point to bow out, and I'll catch you next time. Okay, we good? What spoilers are we talking right. about? I mentioned earlier in this video how I feel that Jonathan was not an overly complicated character, and while that's right. certainly true, I do feel the final episode adds to him some critical nuance and tragedy. Unbeknownst to Jonathan and his oh new bride, God, Aaron, yeah, this one. the same this ship so that's sad. carrying them lie. to their honeymoon has also been boarded by Dio's disembodied head, yeah. the minions, who seek to inflict a final and brutal revenge against Jonathan. This conflict yeah. ends with Jonathan clutching Dio's head, as he knows to put a final end to Dio, he must sacrifice himself. That's pretty tragic he... by itself, but where this becomes a real heartbreaker is despite everything Dio has put Jonathan through, he all still the loves him. Yeah. The attempts on his life, yeah. oh my his god, father, yeah. Jonathan still can't bring himself to hate Dio. Literally, Jonathan still literally, a brother, and he embraces Dio in the it's, final moments of his it's life. It's so mad. Content that the fighting is over, and at the very least, they can coexist at least this. I need to watch this final episode again. I can't lie. I really do and need to. And a fitting end to a magnificent rivalry and deeply complicated. And this was sad. That this was more actually tragic sad. The events we find out about in part three. Start oh Crusaders. God! Yeah. But friends, that is a video for another day. This That's actually Phantom when Blood you deep close, it. Oh my course, god! We're nowhere near done with JoJo's bizarre adventure. In fact, we've barely scratched the surface in why JoJo's becomes the worldwide smash hit it has. So join Literally. me in part two, where I'll be discussing well, uh, part two, part Battle two, Tendency, yeah. one of my absolute favorite arcs in all of JoJo's. Friends, thank you again for joining me today. Alright, this video was amazing. I'm not even gonna videos, lie. And so I'm this still is so figuring good. out the exact release schedule. But suffice to say, there's some stuff coming up I'm pretty excited about. We okay. will definitely be returning to JoJo's as well as a host of other animes in future videos. But for now, friends, a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed, commented, or liked. And I'll see you guys next time. I will definitely give you a like. I already did. Yeah, literally. This, do you know what it is? He said some important points. Like, for me, part one, part, episode one and episode two, episode three was amazing. Like... The whole Jonathan and Dio experience and them fighting each other and you understanding Dio and Jonathan and how their characters are to then episode two when they time skip and you see Jonathan and Dio like high fiving and then you then you deep it that Dio is poisoning his dad and stuff like that and then episode kind of like six seven eight no five six seven eight where Jonathan's kind of like learning Harmoon and fighting um when he runs into Dio it's a bit exciting because you kind of see Dio again but as a vampire. But then the fight with the two other villains that Dio set him up with, you're kind of like, this is kind of taking kind of long. And it was it was a bit like, oh, do you know what I mean? But of the overall scheme of it, like, part one is amazing. Like, honest to God. Like, honest to God. And the fact that even if I look back at it now and be like, obviously part one isn't my favourite. I would never say part one is my favourite, but it's it's a it's a very good introduction. I know some people be like, oh, this is kind of, might be like, this is kind of boring or whatever, whatever, because it's not as, it's not as exciting as part two. It's not as exciting as part three or four or five, but it's, like he said, the way he sees it is, it's not, it's, it's one piece of a puzzle. So to watch part one will get you into part two or, or take you off part one, but part one is so like, it's so great and it just puts you, onto the like the footstep of the stairs to part two three four five and then manga six seven eight and nine coming out soon do you know what i mean so it's literally it's part one is is was great i loved i literally enjoyed part one and maybe like in the next couple of years maybe we react to part one again or maybe we do like we'll react to like two or three episodes of part one my favorite episodes or something. i don't know but it's it's just such a like I honestly think he hit the he hit the nail on the coffin. Like even with the Dio thing with the falcon, I didn't even I didn't even notice that Dio was going to reach for the falcon. I just thought he like because obviously the guy threw the money at him in it, so I thought he was like, oh, I'm not a, I'm not a bitch. I'd like to be taking the money off you. So that's why I thought he was hesitating to take the money. But it from do you know what I mean? So I kind of make but now that I think about it, it makes sense for him to try and reach for the falcon because it's like you're getting your face smushed in food, and it makes sense. Was he goes through? He went through so much crap. 
as like obviously because his dad was a drunk dad probably like made his mother pass away earlier than she should have and obviously Dio hated him for that and Dio grew up with um so much like hate in his heart and then found out that Jonathan had an amazing life an amazing like palace and all that stuff and and Jonathan was nowhere near what Dio was you know because Dio was smart intelligent young um, and handsome and all the stuff like that. Well, Jonathan was obviously handsome, but he wasn't smart. He wasn't intelligent. He wasn't, you know, what Dio is. So I guess, I guess that's probably the reason why um, Dio probably hated him and wanted to like fuck up the Joe Star family. But honestly, Dio is on like one of my favorite favorite antagonists. Like he literally like even. In, no, I'm not even talking about other, like, obviously I'm talking more of other parts, but it's like you literally, in the first episode, you think Dio is a prick, but then at the same time, you think, I kind of sympathise for him because he's gone through a lot. Like, I'm not saying because you've gone through a lot, you should take your aggression, your anger and aggression out on someone else, but at the same time, he has gone through a lot. And obviously he's, it's, he's, it's changed his whole mindset. So, honestly, this is a great, this is a great video. Uh, original video will be in the description down below if you guys do want to check it out without me rambling on. But this was honestly great and I do hope you guys enjoy it and uh, we will react to part two, three and four and then we'll do five whenever we finish. I don't know if he does um, six or seven or eight or nine. No, he won't do nine in it because nine ain't even come out yet. Or eight. Or eight hasn't finished. I would doubt he's done that either. But yeah, literally, this is this is this has been great. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like if you have. Subscribe to become a don today and I'll catch you dons in a bit. Shh.